Okay, then hold on, hold on, hold on. We know this one. We know this one. Ah, ah. To say I was thrown into the deep end is an understatement. There's no guidebook to starting a private tech bomb. It's the most ultimate form of expression of cooking you can do. They like to see explosiveness. They like to see good food. When I'm in the moment, I'm having just as much fun as them. One, go. <laughs> Through my cooking, I'm very expressive and I show my love that way. When I'm cooking and performing, it's one when I'm most calm. So what's your secret? It's not the tricks that I do, it's the connections that I make. You could do your own thing. It's super scary, but the most fulfilling thing you could ever do. My name is Michael Monzon, also known as Teppanyaki Mike, and I'm a private Teppanyaki pop-up chef. All right, we're good to go. We're all staying, I know I'm staying. I'm in, I'm in for the long haul. I love <laughs> all right, so the, we, these wheels turn, so let's pop it out like this. And then we're rolling on a flat. Sometimes on a hill, I would just want to surf it. Originally, when I first started flying knives, I had this idea of using these electric grills and they were super portable and I can go into intimate spots. And it turned out everyone has huge parties. You know, you need a gigantic ass gas grill. I have the most beautiful epic grill, but at the same time, it's the hardest thing to maneuver around. It's hard to get in tight places. Whoa, 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 we're good, we're good. Ugh. It's the hardest part of the business. <laughs> Tight. Oh, that's so tight. <laughs> I've worked in teppanyaki restaurants for almost 30 years and loved what I did. And I always just felt I could always branch out on my own. I've been a private chef since 2018. Crazy. Time flies. <laughs> it's almost too much of an extreme tilt. That tire is always flat. Is it okay? I use one of these rocks. It's a little bit better. Oh, yeah, that's a little bit better. Let's we'll stay. Level enough. Just make it work. Teppanyaki means iron plate cooking. It's the most ultimate form of expression of cooking you can do. Not only can you express yourself through food, you can express yourself through your character, through your movements, through the tricks that you bring. I've seen some Teppan chefs out there playing guitars and doing magic tricks like I do. Bam! <laughs> Rocky Aoki came over from Japan and he was the first of the Benihana owners and he started the whole movement. Without Benihana's, none of us private chefs would be around today. So they got the movement started and we just fine tuned it. Although this is not my favorite thing in the world to do is to prep. It's not so bad when you got a view like that out the window. One of the hardest things about the business is probably procuring the ingredients. I try to use organic mostly if I can. I try to work with local markets if I can. A lot of people don't see that about the flying eyes businesses. They'll see just the cooking part of it, but a lot of it is day shopping, getting ingredients, cleaning, sterilizing, just being able to get 20 organic fillets. Oh my God, harder to get the steaks than it is to hook them. <laughs> Ready for dinner service, baby. There'll always be one or two chefs that you will always want to request. And those are the guys who are behind the scenes doing all the work, mastering tricks. Usually if I'm working like every day, I mean, that's just, I'm, I'm in the moment, I'm in the zone. I don't need to practice that much. But usually if I take like a week or two off, I get really rusty. So you have to look at it from the lens of a customer. What do they like to see? They like to see fire, tricks. Knives, they like to see explosiveness. They like to see good food. They like to see the party happening. So that's what defines a Teppan chef. So I'll do that table, but I'll do a flaming lemon behind the back and then I'll throw the flaming lemon in the hat and then I'll light that on fire, so. But that's hard to do with just the bowl in the hat. That's a still a tricky one. Dial yourself in every party. You just sort of figure it out. Do you know what you failed in? Boo. <laughs> what you did pretty good at, what you could have done better at, you know? And it's just up to you to like work on it, change it, make it better. And each party is its own monster in itself, its own little battle and victory you have to win. Usually it's just kind of mingling with the guests, kind of feeling them out, you know? 
I usually tend to pick on someone. And that's a good advice I always give Tepon. Just pick on someone at the table. People like it when you razz, when you pick someone out and razz them a little bit. Usually I razz the person who, you know, like mama, mama hen, who no one really messes with. I usually try to go for those type people because it pushes boundaries a little bit. That's just the art of just knowing your customer. And Reading the group, that's always been my superpower. I could always read body language, people super well. And, and that's something I really stress to a lot of Tepon chefs. Read your customer, man. You know, they might not want to see these beautiful tricks. They want to might want to see finesse, cleanliness on the grill. All right, how are we doing? So no allergies or anything like that? We're good to go? We'll find out if there's allergies tonight. <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> Holy hell! Woo! Sexy cowboy! <laughs> Thank you. Good looking out. You get all the food. You get all the extra tonight. <laughs> I just kind of wing it. I kind of feel them out. If they're not really paying attention, there's no reason to do that like close up tight magic and all that. Some of these parties, I, I'll start cooking and They've been drinking all day and all they want is just the food. Who am I to hold them back from a good meal? You just sort of really wing it. And that, I think that just contests to like a really good Teflon chef. Whose egg skills are on point tonight? She's the one. You're the one. You got to catch it just like that, okay? I got eight year olds on my TikTok catching it. You can do it. Come on. You got to lob it in the air. This is the trick. Turn it sideways and let it fall dead in the center. So it's gonna go, okay, you got that? Happening. Yeah, it's happening. Like, what's this for? That's for looks. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> I didn't think you were gonna catch it. Honestly. I, <laughs> it's now considered cool to be a Teflon chef. When I remember when it wasn't so cool to be a Teppan chef, I mean, teppanyaki, even 10 years ago, was not really looked upon as like a credible cooking source. People like sushi, they like Mexican, they like French, they like fine dining. Teppanyaki was always kind of looked as the stepchild that no one really wanted in the late 90s, early 2000s. And that was kind of the golden years of Teppan. I've always wanted to kind of carry that energy and keep that momentum. Okay, then hold on, hold on, hold on. We know this one. We know this one. Ah, 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 oh. Here, let's do a snowball. Boom, here we go. There it is. Oh. <laughs> if you got nothing to do, you need to bore them with tricks because it's painful just to stand there and do nothing. So I always found just to just, just blitz them with tricks just overload their senses with flipping and throwing and throwing stuff at them. And so when I'm in the moment, it's it's genuine, like I'm having just as much as fun as them. You know, it's it's now my party, you know, and you're at my table. Now we're having fun together. What? Social distance hug. together and catch it like that and get it together. Three, two, one. Oh! I think, oh shit, no. <laughs> good job, you got rock too. And if you don't like, so that orange sauce is good, this one's pretty good too. <laughs> okay, it's lit, it's lit, it's lit. <laughs> wait for it, wait for it. Liquid hot magma. Hold on. Oh. <laughs> There's actually a time where I didn't do fire for two years. This is why I will never teach Teppan chefs fire tricks unless I'm there watching them. There's a real legit reason for it. So we use this burning liquid, I'm not gonna say the name because I don't anyone trying to replicate it, to use for our fire show. We use vodka for our onion volcano. That's no secret there. Well, I ran out of vodka on the volcano. I was cooking a lot of tables. So I'm trying to light my onion volcano. So I grab my fire liquid that we use for our fire sticks and I try to light the onion volcano. It burns 
And as I'm lighting the liquid, the fire burns up the stream and blows the bottle up on me. I am now on fire. My whole face is on fire. It's all over me. I'm rubbing it all over me, trying to get it off my body. I'm freaking out. Everyone at the table is going, ah, they think it's part of the show. I'm freaking out. I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. The owner, she runs out of the bar and she has to grab a pitcher of water and throw water on my car and on me and put me out. By the time I get back to the kitchen, all the chefs who saw it, their jaws were dropped. They could not believe what they saw. They showed a picture of my face and I was completely burnt up, burnt up my arm. How can that happen at a Teflon table? Cause it's real danger out there. You could, the real danger can happen. So I would never do fire for almost two years. I was literally legit scared. No way I'm gonna do fire tricks, not gonna happen. Literally it was trial by fire. I had to get back on the horse and just start doing fire tricks. And then once you just break that fear, and again, it was just breaking down fears and just conquering that stuff and pushing through, you know, now I'm a safer chef and I've never really been burned ever since. That needed to happen for me to be a better fire performer. Cause now I love to do fire tricks. I juggle, blow fire, fire with magic. Cause who doesn't love fire? <laughs> I think we all have a little pyromaniac in us, don't we? <laughs> Whoa, God. That wind is vicious. Oh no. Is it on fire? Is it on fire? Is it lit? Is it still lit? Is it still lit? Stop, drop, and roll. Tell me, tell me, tell me. I've got a lot of weird, maybe ADD, OCD thoughts going in my head, but always when I'm cooking and performing, it's when I'm most calm and still. And actually it's most bizarre because that's when I'm throwing fire and flames and there's a lot riding on the line, but like I thrive in chaos. Big finish, big finish, big finish, big finish. Oh, Blow it out, my guy. Ooh, oh, oh, come on. Ah. Why I fell in love with cooking was sort of like, it was an indirect moment I had with my father who was pretty much non-existent in my life. But it was one of those situations where it was bring your kid to work day. And my father was actually the head chef over at the, um, the Elks Club. I remember he sat me on the counter and I watched an entire dinner service. And this is back in the eighties. So I'm watching chefs smoking cigarettes chopping, cutting, and I remember vividly fire. A part of me was like, what the hell am I watching? And another part felt like I belong there. Just always had this weird fascination with food, flavors. I come from a broken home, so I always had to cook for myself and my sister, you know, sometimes my brother, you know, we'd always fend for ourselves. So we were always just left to our own advices. And so I'd always create things, feel like cooking is the, my love language. I might not necessarily be good at showing it, but through my cooking, I'm very expressive and I show my love that way. That's, I've always just wanted to just help people. And out of all the world's suffering that you can see, the worst that really gets to my heart is hunger. Homelessness in my hometown, that stuff really breaks my heart. I was hungry and on the streets. So that really, that's really passionate for me is just to feed people. And I might not make like a huge difference, but I'm making some kind of a difference. It's great to be your own boss and it's great to call the shots and make good money and all that, but that's not what I think about at the end of the day. I think about what service did I give today? What value was I today? Was I a great father? Was I a great husband? Was I a great chef? Was I a great entertainer? That's, that's all you could try to be. And, you know, and this world's crazy. You know, a lot of people kind of lose themselves you know, and the material things. And there's nothing wrong with just being really humble and just being just courteous and kind and giving. And if you have a chance to give and feed and give an opportunity, do it. Then, so that's what's always kept me going. Yeah, I got a little emotional, sorry. <laughs> I left Hollywood in like 2018. And that's, that's where that all kind of came to fruition because I've always wanted to be a private chef. I didn't really know how. I had a job in Hollywood where the restaurant I worked at, it wasn't open yet. So I was just basically, they're sending me to celebrities' houses. So they were literally sending me all over these celebrities' houses, doing the pop-up Teflon thing. 
And each time I would do it, I would always visualize myself back home in Washington. I could do this back home. Why can't I do this for myself? It was just breaking out of that restaurant mindset and getting into the own mindset of, you could do your own thing. It's super scary, but the most fulfilling thing you could ever do. And it's definitely not boring. Very, very good magician friend taught me this trick a long time ago. Just say stop whenever you want. Say stop whenever you want. Don't let me see you. <laughs> okay, card there. Take this wire. Rub it on rub it on the card. Rub it on the card. Yes. Will you just quit making it weird? Okay. Just... <laughs> okay, did you show them the card? Did they show... You can show them. You can show them. I haven't seen it. Stop looking. Oh, oh sorry, sorry. Come on. What? <laughs> Get that. Is that it? Let's see. Get that. Let's see. Okay. Be able to do something like that on your own terms is completely priceless. Definitely a movement that needs to be moved forward. And I see it in another year or two, just in every state, all over the place. <laughs> Everything I've always gotten came at a time when I was mature enough to handle it. So back in my Hollywood years, this is just four or five years ago, I seen these you know, memories come up on my Facebook, see that guy on there, and I'm like, there's no way that that guy five years ago would be handling the flying knives parties that I now do, that I put into it. Because every party is, I'm 1000% invested in it. You know, that's why every party is like a win. You know, and then once it's done, it's done. Then it's on to the next one. Then you get reinvested into the next one. And to repeat that, doing over and over again, to keep it exciting on that level, you know, it takes, it takes a lot of like freeing yourself, you know, and knowing your value, what you can bring to people. And especially nowadays, you know, you don't have to kill yourself, you know, for someone else, you know, kill yourself for you, man. You know, and at least reap the rewards for it can't stress to chefs enough. What's your secret? It's not the tricks that I do. It's more or less like the connections that I make. You know, it's the, the value that I bring to these people. And more importantly, I cook a party and I book a party and I execute a party with the hopes of they have to hire me back. You know, there's just no better feeling when you just knock out a killer dinner service and only Teflon chefs can get this satisfaction because most chefs don't get to cook in front of you. Unless you're a private chef reaping the benefits of having that interactive moment, there's no better feeling when people just look back and applaud and that's the best dinner I've had in my entire life. Fast forward that over and over again, that shit gets addicting, man. You, can't, you ride that rush, you know, you love it and it literally defines who you are. I am absolutely 1000% in my DNA, a Teflon chef, and I will cook until I fall over dead on the grill. It's, it's just how I express myself. It's the most time I've ever felt free. And I always found like that's the secret is staying moving and active. Because if you're complacent and sitting still in one place, if you're great, you'll eventually run out that place and you'll grow, you'll outgrow that place. So. You know, each place I ever worked to was just a step higher. It was always just a little bit more scarier. Like, can I really work there? I don't know if I'm good enough. That's the difference between the make a tep on chef because we just don't say no. Do you know how many doors were slammed on me that I still kept knocking and I knocked sideways? I just don't take no for an answer. And there's so many private chefs out there who are so rock solid in their career because either you're a chef and you're working in chaos in a kitchen and you're working for crazy owners and you're probably not being fulfilled. There's no better feeling than controlling all that chaos yourself. You have to understand that your timing is, is so finite on this earth. You don't have much time. And I realized that like, you know, in my twenties, I just seem like my career went by like that. Now that I'm in my late forties, the biggest regret I had with Flying Knives was, I wish I started this 10 years ago. I wasted too much time. I'll tell young kids, don't waste time. You need to get on it. And that's, no one listens to you. It's just something that you have to really just kind of like go through the motions yourself. You only have a small window before, you know, you have greatness in you and then your time's gonna be passed. And then you would have thought back, how great could have I been? 
You know, don't waste that time. Break your back for yourself. Don't do it for someone else who's not going to be grateful for you. You know, because especially in the restaurant industry, it's very cold. It can be very discouraging. You know, and to land in a spot where they take good care of you, it's great if you do. But in my experience, better do that shit on your own. Ha 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 ha!